In this video, I'm going to demo converting Bifrost geometry to Maya particles using a plugin I created. These can be used for all the standard stuff, rendering with third-party renderers, um, using Maya instancers, whatever you might need particles for. The basic setup is a Bifrost graph to generate geometry, conversion to Maya mesh, then the node provided by this plugin, which uh, creates particle data from the mesh. Then finally, a particle shape to actually receive that data. So first, I just want to show how the node itself works. So it's called mesh to particles, and the input is very simply just whatever Maya mesh source, and the output is a time attribute, and this is supposed to go into a particle's uh, current time attribute. And what this does is it one forms the relationship on like which particle shape this is targeting, and it also acts as an update mechanism. Uh, the current time attribute changing is what tells the particles that you know it's time to update. A few settings that need to be set on the particle shape is I want to disable is dynamic, and I also want to set the start frame to something very high. This effectively disables the particle shape from trying to solve and update it, its own attributes. Rather, it's just going to purely rely on the data coming from the mesh. And now it, uh, it might be hard to see, so I'll go ahead and switch these to spheres. But now I have, um, in fact, particles at those vertices, and I can do whatever you know mesh modeling operations. I can increase the subdivisions here uh, to get more particles. Of course, doing this manually every time is pretty tedious. So included with the um, with the plugin, there is a utility script, and assuming that's in place, uh, there's uh, the, there's two utilities. One is for just converting mesh to particles. So I can actually select and maybe make a few of these. Um, you can select a bunch of meshes and run this, and this will just do basically what I just did manually. It will do that automatically for all these selected meshes. So going back to my Bifrost points, the first thing I need to do is convert this to a mesh. Uh, one of the uh, compounds that come with the plugin is called uh, Geo to Maya Particles. And the input for this can be any Maya geometry that has points. So this could be mesh, strands, or points, obviously. And then it does some reformatting of the object and just to kind of prepare it to be converted to particles. And one of those steps is to take whatever is coming in and create a mesh from it. So if I go ahead and slot this in, I'll get this kind of hideous looking mesh. But all I really care about is something I can get out to Maya as my mesh. So at this point, I could right click and you know create my mesh and set everything up manually. Um, but as before, there's a utility to do all this for me. Um, there's a separate one dedicated just for Bifrost called Bifrost Two Particles Dialog. And so if I select the graph and then I run this, it'll bring up this little window with a list of all the outputs of this graph. And I can just click on the one I want to create particles from and it will just set everything up for me. Uh, I'll go ahead and disable the output so I'm seeing just the particles. And they, you know, they're here, but they don't look quite right. So if I bring back the original, the position came through, but not the color or size or anything. The reason for this is simply that Bifrost and Maya use different names for their respective attributes. And that's what this property map is for. If I right click this, there is one with kind of all of the standard attributes already set up. So now that I've created this, you can see that now they look correct. The color and the size is identical to the originals. And if I just jump inside of this, it's just a bunch of key value pairs. So it's just a, a string property where the key is the Bifrost name and the value is the particle attribute name. This one contains the, the really common ones, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the size, the color, the velocity, et cetera. But there are, I mean, you could add anything to this. So there are a bunch of other attributes when it comes to particles. Um, there's a whole bunch, but you know, this one just contains the more common ones. There's also the set of user scalar and user vector uh, attributes. And there's also a Bifrost version for that. So if I right click this, I can create this user property map. And this just contains those five user scalar and user vector attributes, which I could type in whatever you know Bifrost attribute I want to assign to these. So for example, point normal, I can assign to vector one. And then if I look at the particles, I now have a user vector attribute with all of that point normal data inside of it. The other option for getting kind of arbitrary um, properties out to the particles is instead of using the user data, I can go to this node and just enable keep unmap properties. And now if I go back to the the uh, particles, you'll see I have an attribute here called point normal. And this is the nice name, but the actual name of this attribute is going to be uh, point underscore normal, just like it is in Bifrost. And so you don't actually have to worry about, um, you know, renaming the Bifrost attributes. The only reason you might want to is because depending on what you're wanting to use them for or if, you know, related to like rendering and stuff, um, they might not get picked up. So for example, Redshift, I couldn't render this point normal attribute, but I can render the user vector one. So 
depending on what you're using them for, um, you may need to rename them, but you can just send all of the Bifrost attributes as is to the particles directly. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I have some Maya particles, which are pretty much a perfect representation of whatever I do um, inside of Bifrost. Just to take this one step further, I'll go ahead and create some instances on these. So I'll create uh, a couple meshes and then select these particles and make an instancer. Uh, now I'll need to go to the particle shape and in the instancer section, I just want to set the rotation to uh, rotation per particle. Uh, one thing I should mention actually where this comes from. Uh, so I used a scatter points node, which creates a um, point orientation attribute automatically. But this is a quaternion, like a vector four, and the particles can't use this directly. But one of the steps inside of this node, um, assuming this is enabled, is to convert that quaternion to a um, you know a vector three of Euler angles that can be used by the particles themselves. So that's why that rotation attribute was already there for me, just because this node is kind of taking care of that. So there is uh, covers my rotation. And then I assigned two meshes, but I'm only seeing one. Of course, this is just because uh, we need some ID attribute to tell which mesh to use. So I can do this just like I would in Bifrost with a randomized, I think it's called randomized selection, yeah. And then I'll set this to the correct number and just slot this in. And if I go in back to the particle shape, I can set object index to that point instance ID. And now I'm getting a mix of you know the cubes and the cones, and I can adjust this as I see fit. Um, and then even if I wanted to, I could take this another step further and just copy this and create, let's call it, uh, I don't know, point viz, whatever, um, which will create another attribute. And this controls the, I can use this to control the visibility of these instances. Uh, oh didn't actually drop it in there. Okay, now it should be available, yeah, point viz. And if I change the seed here, just so I get some different values. Um, and yeah, it pretty much goes from there.